The Maybot and Dear Jezza are planning something of a Brexit blind date uh, a week on Sunday on the BBC, or perhaps ITV. The venue has yet to be agreed. But their plans for a cosy soirée à deux are being threatened by would-be gatecrashers who don't think the couple can be trusted on their own. As of now, it's not clear if Theresa from Maidenhead and Jeremy from Islington are prepared to turn to their intimate twosome into a full-scale Brexit party, with all shades of opinion invited along. It's a headache for all concerned, not least the broadcasters. No wonder Adrian Charles has checked himself solo into a health spa to get away from it all. Here's his roundup of the week. Oh. Call me Bob, because I am knackered. There's a lot of people, a friend of mine described them as Bobs. That's not Roberts, that's people who are bored of Brexit. You and me both, Jeremy. I'm so sick of Brexit. I need a spa day to relax myself, just drain it all out of my system. Hello, Michael. So you're bored of Brexit too? Another Bob? Me and you both? Obviously, I'm in the right place. Underneath me, there's all this really sticky, muddy stuff. Is that the uh, Brexit quagmire then? It feels soft and. Ooh, I'm really pleased I'm here. I'm pleased you're here too, Michael. Trust me. Or should I say, Bob? Michael and I are bored of Brexit. The Prime Minister's rather banking on the idea that everyone else is too. The British people don't want to spend any more time arguing about Brexit. They want a good deal done that fulfills the vote and allows us to come together again as a country. And the Prime Minister's campaign was given a nice kickstart by her pal John Claude. And this being a Russian spa, I'm supposed to put this hat on. Is this absolutely necessary? Afraid so, Adrian. I'm totally convinced that, is, that this is the only deal possible. Those who do think, by rejecting the deal, that they would have a better deal, will be disappointed in the first seconds after the rejection of this um, uh, deal. Fast as Europeans handed out uh, olive branches, back home, even the Prime Minister's so-called friends were lining up to break him in half. This de deal actually just gives us the worst of all worlds. No guarantee of smooth trade in the future and no ability to reduce the tariffs that we need to conclude uh, uh, trade deals with the rest of the world. The best even sympathetic Tories could do to support her was to rustle up some alternative deals. I think a responsible government has to have a plan B. And that plan B that I believe can command a majority in the House of Commons is something like the Norway model, Norway Plus. And today, Tory Remainers have reappeared, banging the second referendum drum again. We're going to have a people's vote, I believe, because the next fortnight will show the truth that many of us have known for many months, which is Parliament is gridlocked. Meet Yevgeny, the man who's going to help me forget Brexit. He wasn't just our own backbenchers working her nerves. Howls of protest came from all over the country. I tell you what, I hope Yevgeny can sort my backstop out. It's giving me terrible, Chip. We have to see the end of the backstop. Uh, that's the only way we could vote uh, for this agreement. And at the moment, the Prime Minister seems determined to go ahead with what she has on the table. It comes to something when it's left to Sinn Féin to give us some light relief. There's no such thing as a good Brexit or an easy Brexit for Ireland. We regard the withdrawal agreement as the least worst option. It does represent the bottom line. And any talk about uh, ditching the backstop is fanciful. 
Nicola Sturgeon slapped the deal about a bit, finding something specific to object to about it. And also, naturally enough, seeing another window of opportunity to go for a second independence referendum. If the backstop in the withdrawal agreement is activated, which seems highly likely, it would place Scotland at a very serious competitive disadvantage with Northern Ireland. The case for the people of Scotland having the right to determine our own future uh, have never been uh, stronger uh, than now. And of course, I will return to that matter when we know which approach to Brexit the House of Commons chooses. Oh, well, that's sorted out my backstop. As for the Prime Minister's backstop, though, hmm, it's another matter. And here is a visual representation of what Jeremy Corbyn was only too keen to do at PMQs. It's not hard to be the best deal if it's the only deal. <laughs> By definition, by therefore, Mr. Speaker, by definition, it's also the worst deal. <laughs> but the PM had a pretty cool repost. And what does Labour have to offer? Six bullet points. My weekend shopping list is longer than that. The stresses came thick and fast. On Wednesday, it was time for economic impact analysis from the Treasury and the Bank of England. And the Chancellor was disarmingly frank about the cost to all of us of the deal. If we are only looking at the economic benefits, remaining in the EU um, is a slightly better economic outcome than the Prime Minister's deal. The Governor of the Bank of England outlined what kind of plunge the economy would take in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Plunge? Plunge, really. The direction of the effects of a reduction in openness is clear. Lower supply capacity, weaker demand, a lower exchange rate, and higher inflation. Oh, have got a nice reception from you, Uncle? He's said this sort of thing before, he's been wrong before, and now the forecasts are so hysterical that they're very hard to take seriously. And the Environment Secretary is worried about what a no-deal Brexit could mean. For our food exports. I just have a herbal tea, I think, you Thanks very much. You informed the Public Account yeah. Committee in October that in order to prioritise the flow of food imports, imports from the EU would be allowed to pass through UK ports mm. without checks. Yes. How long might imports be allowed to pass through without these checks? I think potentially for a period of months. Months? Months. Are you sure that it will be reciprocated from the EU side? Well, that is the, that is a the um, sixty four thousand euro question. While the Tories were busy catastrophising, Labour were plotting for all they were worth to undermine Theresa May's premiership, leaving every strategy on the table, including the second referendum. We want a deal that will protect jobs in the economy. If we can't achieve that, if the government can't achieve that, um, we think we can. If the government can't achieve that, we should have a general election. If that's not possible, we'll be calling upon the government then to join us in a public vote. That's the sequence, I think, that will inevitably go through over this period. Oh, it's inevitable now, is it? Interesting. Evgeny just told me that he's heard about some TV debate. It better be on ITV, I'll tell you that much. I just mentioned it to Michael. Oh, sound asleep. Forgotten all about Brexit. Bless him. Sweet dreams, Bob. Sweet dreams.